Uh, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna fire up the promo that oh, uh, Phillips did. Let's go. This is like, dude. How is a company this big doing something this cool? I was stunned, to be honest. Is, is this this is real? This is real. That is yeah. incredible. This is real. Fixables. Dude, they partnered with Prusa. This was the point of 3D printing when it was first like coming onto the scene like a decade ago. Dude! So you could just like Oh my god. You could just make Philips compatible like replacement pieces and adapters and they've got a whole thing like look like that dude, this is so cool. They've got they've got Joseph freaking Prusa in the promo for it. This is like the best news a WAN show's ever had. Right? This is genuinely incredibly cool. They will have my business for this reason. I like, yeah, thirty years that. ago, yeah, dude. I don't know anything. I okay, I don't not know anything. I don't know much about Philips, right? In in the last you know ten years, what have they done that's been on my radar? They have overpriced light bulbs. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They have like oh, we use them here. The, the Wan set has the Philips Hue. Sure, right? But like like ha have they done anything? that has even remotely seemed this cool that has shown up on your guys' radar in the last decade. Definitely not. But I don't think anyone in the spaces that Philips operates in has either to defend them a little oh, bit. Oh, no, 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 I'm not attacking them. I'm not attacking them. I'm just <laughs> no, saying. No, I'm just making it clear for other people. Oh, they, they do a lot of healthcare stuff. Dude, they, they, this oh, came cool. completely out of nowhere for me. Oh, me too. And I was just so, I was so excited to see this that I just didn't, I don't know, I don't really know what else to say other than this is super cool. So they've teamed up with Prusa Research to launch Philips Fixables, aiming to encourage self-repair of Philips products using 3D printed replacement components, which will be available on printables.com. Philips will include recommended print settings to ensure that your 3D printed parts are sturdy enough to be a long-term solution. And there's only one design so far, but the website and promo video show additional 3D printed parts for Philips grooming products, and users are able to submit requests for specific parts if they're not already available. So it's baby steps right now. I sick. In the infancy, but right now, if this is what it seems to be on the surface, I am so amped, and this is enough for, to significantly sway my purchase decisions between like a Philips something or an Oral-B that thing or, you know, a Norelco shaver or a Philips shaver. Like I am, you know, I'm so in. Same I'm here. I'm so in. You, same here. You know what's interesting is uh, pe people are talking about how apparently it's like trending on Thingiverse or whatever already. Um, I, I, I wonder if this could be an interesting way to inform um, like product development uh because if, if you see that one part oh like in, in comparison to all the other ones that you're you're offering yeah. if they don't like mind this for data really often they're crazy yeah you're like wow this one part seems to be breaking a lot let's let's re-engineer that a little bit on the next model and make it better or in like the future. everyone and their dog prints a, a a number five and a half you know, uh, yep. uh, buzz cut Maybe guard. we should add that. That should a, be in the standard option. kit. You know, dude, yeah. there, this is this is cash money, or I hope it is. That's so killer. This kind of behavior should absolutely be rewarded. It will affect oh, yeah. my purchase decisions easily. If there's a Philips equivalent to something else, I'm reaching for the Philips. Panda oh. says Philips is Norelco law. Okay, well, fine. Branding works then, I guess. They've, they've indoctrinated me. Um, Someone in full plane chat also said that they're in the market for a new beard trimmer and they're going to get a Philips one now because of it. This is like, this is where, you know, voting with your wallet works both ways, right? Yeah. Um, and I hate how often it has to be like a negative message. This is, yeah. this is exciting. This is an opportunity for us to this personally. send a positive message. Like gives me hope for the future. I was actually, um, I went as far as ordering the replacement battery for my, um, my electric toothbrush. I think it's a, I want to say it's an Oral-B or something like that. And I was so, I was so annoyed to discover how difficult it is to replace the battery in it, but I found out it's possible. And then I had a, like a video title idea in my mind that was like, um, my toothbrush shouldn't be this hard to fix. And the idea was I was going to do like a handful of little fixes around the house that were like rejuvenating things. And then we did that sponsored thing with, um, what's their nuts? Uh, uh, Lifen or something like that. And I started using that toothbrush and then I got distracted by some other shiny video project. And then we ne so we never ended up doing the video, but um, 
having had that experience with that other toothbrush and then seeing Philips's attitude here, there's just absolutely no question that I would consider a brand that built that kind of impossible to repairability into their toothbrush anymore. I just wouldn't even consider it anymore. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm looking them up right now. Cause I'm not, I wasn't actually sure of the, the brand of my toothbrush and shaver. And it, I, I guess I'm already in the Philips ecosystem, so there's not a ton more I can do. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, but, but hey, they'll have continued um, purchases for me, I guess, over time. Well, I mean, we're in a unique position where there's definitely things that we can do, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least there's that. 